Namaste. Today, let us talk about ego. The question is, what is ego? And uh, it is this three letter word which is considered to be the cause of a lot of our problems. The spiritualist, most of the spiritual masters take ego in a very negative manner. They keep on repeating that, abolish your ego. And you rise in your consciousness. So let us discuss on this aspect of ego, which is within all of us. Whether we admit or not, ego is something which is embedded in us. The moment that me and mine starts coming in a child, it enters. This is me, this is I, this is mine. Even though it's the false I. But whatever said and done, this false I is that material self, it's that thinking self for which the body and mind lives. So ego is for self-interest for self-preservation, for that self-image that the material mind seeks. Ego is that you to create that self-image which is so important to you and which is so important to all those masters because you can see their images hanging all around. So long as you have an identity, a name which you care for, ego is there. For me, ego is mind and mind is ego. And besides that, mind as we know functions in duality with relativity in opposites of this and that, God and devil, good and bad, positive and negative, right and wrong, hot and cold, truth and lie, and so on and on. Everything is in opposites, in duality. It cannot function in totality as one. So when mind itself is dual, that means it is both spiritual as well as material. We are spiritual beings, no doubt, going through material experience, but material experience is also equally important. And when material existence persists, ego persists. We can't avoid it. So, ego has both positive and negative aspects. Let's discuss on the positive which very, very few people would like to discuss about because ego is taken for granted as negative. Everything has some side of. Every aspect has its positivity, some respect or the other. You just can't deny that. So, since we all live in this material world, the self-importance is very much required. It gives us that zeal. It gives us that push behind to compete in this competitive world to become something. After all, we have to become something to survive. Not only survive, be comfortable. 
to be able to prove, if not to anybody else, to our own self that I am something and that I am something in body and mind is ego, nothing else. So that is the positive aspect of ego. The negative effect starts the moment ego gets into your head. And then what happens? It becomes self-destructive. Then you think no end of yourself. You feel all superior. And that hinders progress. The moment it enters into your head and starts ruling your mind is when ego is destructive. But ego is constructive. When that seal determines the flow of your psychic movements to go higher in the material self. Now spiritually, ego is that lower consciousness and soul is that higher consciousness. To counter ego, to counter ego, what we require is self awareness which emerges from the soul. It checks the mind, it counters the mind. Yes, it cannot control the mind. Mind is an uncontrollable operating system. It cannot be controlled. It works on its auto mode through its memory and intellect. It does not require the real you to interfere. The real you is that conscious principle which makes your mind conscious, which makes your mind alert, attentive and aware. It is because of awareness that everything exists, everything which is, which was, which will be, is because you are aware of it. And this self-awareness, the spirit within us, is there to check the mind from all its egoistic, negative egoistic aspects. And in spite of being spiritual beings, the true self being the conscious self, we cannot deny the presence of the thinking self, which is functioning as per neuroscientists in subconscious level over 95% of the time. We can't. We have to give its due place and respect. See to it, it does not conquer the real you, not that material you, that spiritual you which is far higher, higher for which, through which that material ego exists and it is your ignorance which allows it to take over as long as you don't allow it to take over, ego is constructive, otherwise it is destructive. So, what is required is like a tightrope walker. We have a pole. On one side is ego and the other side is spiritual. You are supposed to balance the two, not negate any. Have respect for both. If it goes, bends towards this side, then you pull the other side. If it bends towards that side, you pull this side. You are like that surfer in the ocean, surfing between the material and the spiritual. And that is how you balance the waves of the ocean, the power of the ocean, the force of the ocean which comes and you fight against it and balance yourself. Similarly, balance your mind in both material and the spiritual. Ego 
and the divine both residing in your mind and gradually as contentment comes in the moment contentment comes in ego effortlessly dissolves so the answer to ego is not to negate the answer to ego is contentment humility some acts of selflessness we can't deny that ego is selfish yes you have to balance that with some degree of selflessness so selflessness compassion humility humanness humanity and to begin with it all starts with content but when you are content your head bows down ego surrenders so on its own you cannot force the ego to surrender your self so kindly have respect for both accept both be able to have that power to watch your own ego as and when it is crossing its limits as it when it is controlling your mind the moment you watch your ego becomes shy and conscious and it will bow down itself thank you namaste